you. All of you. Most of us. You know, I wasn't able to join us. No, it's not here because things. So yeah. All right. Which doesn't help the. Are the drums real? Yeah, <laughs> the drums, the drums yeah. aren't real. It's it was all it was all a myth. Nice yeah. riot shirt, by the way. Awesome riot shirt. Very cool. Love it. Um. So so how are you guys doing today? Great. We're doing pretty good. good. Yeah. We're doing good. Just yeah. demoed some new songs and we're yeah. Gonna... We're working on new stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. All right. Cool. Can't really go out and play shows or anything. So oh, might so... as well keep putting it out. So it's um, restricted up there as well, because I know you guys are doing a little bit better with it up there. Um, I mean, I it's really good if you're a folk band, because people just sit at tables and watch you, but yeah, not yeah. for heavy metal, you know? Yeah, you can't have, like, a stage. You can't have, like, a floor with people coming up. And bands have to wear masks, and in power metal, it's just really not reasonable. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, you know, it, I, it's been, like, I don't know, like, last time I went to a show was in... January, I think. So, oh, yeah. you know, that was in New York City. So saw saw a midnight and uh, yeah, it was midnight. Somebody else, I don't know, but that was a cool show. But I miss those. Hey, I miss shows. You know, that was, you know, yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Our last yeah. show was actually pretty sweet. It was in February, and we opened for Ross the Boss when he was touring. Oh, Ross the Boss was on. I wanted to see that, and every time that guy would play, I would always miss him. Like he played like a local club around here, and like I was always, I always ended up having to do something anytime Ross the Boss was playing. So That's you know, nice. I never got to see Ross the Boss. But, it, uh, no, it's a live show for sure, and everyone gets into it because he plays yeah. all the classics too. Yeah, and he plays then... the Manowar songs, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was really fun, man. Yeah, that, that must uh, one of these days. One of these days, I will see Ross the boss. So um, let's start with Jan. Um, Jan, 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 Jan. That's how you say it. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I just have a quick question on on your on on your metal archives photo. Are you wearing a Masters Hammer shirt? It's like a yellow Ooh. shirt. No, it's not. This was before that. That was in twenty. Your metal archives photo is actually hilarious. Is it? Yeah. It's it's and, uh, oh yeah. Uh, no, I think I'm wearing a bro shirt actually. Oh okay. It looks like a Master's Hammer shirt. I was like, does it? Yeah, it kind of does. Like I was like, is that a Master's Hammer shirt? I couldn't tell. Because I'm asking you because they're from the Czech Republic. You're from Slovakia. I imagine like you're pretty familiar with those guys, right? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Like a lot are... of Czech fans are a big influence on me and the music. Oh, that... Was that Thor? Oh, uh, it maybe. Could have been Thor. No, nope, that's a Rome shirt. Oh yeah. Right. Okay, that's that's Hey, your face is amazing. Yeah. White her own, white her own shirt. <laughs> All right, I was like, I was like, Masters Hammer. That's like I, I was just introduced to that band in the '90s from that album. I forget what the album was, but it got them all like in their picture. They're all kind of like in the forest or something. I forgot what it was called, but uh, the first time I heard that, I was just like, what, what is this? You know, and I'll never forget it. You know, uh, it must have been Claudio na Charodienice, which is which is oh, yeah. hammer from rolls from off the tongue. tongue. Yeah, that's an yeah, easy that's one. A... <laughs> <laughs> you, you say yeah, yeah. it so eloquently um so uh tell starting with jan uh tell us about um slovakia like what was the music scene there when when you, you kind of grew up there like when did you like you kind of grew up there right i mean for the most part right i came to canada when i was eight. Oh, okay so you never well, really it was a really... lot of euro dance <laughs> and like um <laughs> Like kickboxing. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember much else. All right. Oh, wait, wait. There was one band. They were called, what were they called? No Name. And they were just shit. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. All right. Yeah. I never, you know, I never heard anything about a scene in, in, in Slovakia, you know? That was after, like, the Soviets, right? That was, like, Slovakia when it was Slovakia. It wasn't Czechoslovakia anymore when you were young, right? Because you're not that old. Yeah, right? I got banded in 92 when the, it was called the Velvet Revolution when the Czech Republic and Slovakia split. And then the Czech scene actually had more of that power metal sound, whereas I think the Slovak scene had more of, like, the thrash and death bands. Okay. And it was... I mean, but I learned all that, obviously, after. But it was... Um, there was... Gladiator. That's from Slovakia. Sure. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And they were death metal. They were and like death were rash, grunge. and then they turn into grunge, and then now the they're same like... year, same name. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was you, really should, cool. you guys should check out this band Gladiator. It sounds like like Gladiator. beneath the remains Sepultura era. Right. Yeah. It, it's so fucking good. It's really. But good. then the same year they made Made of Pain. No, uh, they went. Ninety three was Made of Pain. 
Right. And then after 93 was that grunge album. Wasn't it the same year, though? No. It was almost. Oh, yeah. they, they went grunge, right? Yeah. yeah, like, yeah. A year after, after they made, like, this made awesome... catchy rock music. Yeah. <laughs> and they never changed the name. So, like, in their discography, <laughs> it's, like, grueling death metal thrash to, like, this really soft grunge rock. Yeah. And uh, it's unfortunate. Yeah, some bands <laughs> had to, you know... That was their idea of survival, you know. Some bands had to completely change everything, you know. Um, oh, yeah. You know, it was they were, you know, like every band did it. You know, every band kind of has a weird error, you know, like where they kind of went into weird things, you know. Happened to the best of them, you know. So, um, when, um, how did you end up in Calgary? Like, how did you end up here? You know, in the middle of Canada from Slovakia. You know why? Um. They? Yeah. um my parents were kind of just sick of living there. They saw no future for like me and my brother. So we immigrated here in 1999 and yeah, it was between Edmonton and Calgary. I think the, we were just so tired that we ended up in Calgary instead of Edmonton. Cause it was a long, like, like two or three flights and yeah, we just stayed here. That, that's about it. Wow. I don't think we did a whole, whole lot of planning there. It just kind of happens. <laughs> yeah, just, you just end up in, in Calgary, you know? That's, all right. Yeah. Um, so, like, how did how did Rome form? Like, how did you guys get together? How did that, what's the story of that? Um, Around, like, probably, I, I was flirting with, like, some heavy metal ideas and riffs. And then, eventually, it formulated into maybe two, three, four songs over the course of probably around 2007. By 2008, I had a bunch of songs, and I was thinking to myself, like, what am I going to do with this stuff? And then, kind of by the end of that, I was like, well, this is starting to sound pretty cool. So I started to talk to, I had my buddy Clennon, he knew Sean Vincent, who was our first bass player. And at this point, we already, like, I already had demos and stuff recorded. And I showed him on, it was this was back when MSN was, uh, oh yeah, yeah, like uh, MSN Messenger. I talked to him on there. He liked it and he was into it. He wanted to play. And then I talked to Alex over here shortly yeah. after. On MSN. The Same thing, 2009. MSN. Because of a friend of mine knew yeah, him. They went to school together. Yeah, they went to school. And somebody playing guitar in a play, and I was strumming real fast, and he's like, oh, I got a friend who's uh, starting a power metal band. Maybe, yeah, it's just beautiful, right? And uh, That's how you strum? Yeah, but like, you don't <laughs> see this. I've been behind you for, like, five years now. Okay. And so You've you been behind me doing that for five years. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, the thing is, like, Jan's skipping, like, a crucial part. Like, Jan's, like, a total prodigy. You can play, like, at any instrument. So he recorded the whole first album by himself. Yeah, right? Blesk is all young. So he. Well, I was getting there. I was just getting through how it formed. Oh, I thought you skipped a part. Well, oh. it kind of comes back around. <laughs> we rehearsed so, this. Yeah. <laughs> so it formed after that. But, yeah. Well, it formed after that, yeah. But yeah, after, the, until... after Blesk was released. Mm-hmm. Uh, not Actually, after. no. By uh, the but end... Blesk was done by the time we joined. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so, what a, your... so he no. joined after Sean. Okay. And then my buddy David <laughs> was asked, who was yeah. in... He went to school with me. We both would take the bus up. So basically all just common. It's good times. Yeah. Just a web of people I knew. Word of mouth through friends kind of thing. Yeah, and that's how the band formed. But the album, and prior to the album, we released what's uh, the, what was it? The Through the Universe EP. Mm-hmm. That was in 2009. Yeah, that was on your favorite format, which is cassette. You know about and... that? You, you, did, did you did you look at my videos? Did you look at my cassette rant? I had to. I saw uh, that. You now, now, that. what do you think? Now, as you as you probably look at, you know, very quickly, guys. Sorry to interrupt, but if you look at my videos, you know, more of my news videos, uh, a lot of people don't like me. Um, do our reviews <laughs> do better. Um, the, the, the reviews were my wife's idea. She's the one that started doing the reviews. Like I was orig- originally, I did the podcast on Spotify audio only, and I would do like these specials about certain subjects in metal. Like I would, like I did an episode on like Alistair Crowley, and I would do shit like that. Then I started doing news, you know, which mm-hmm. I would just kind of find these you know random articles and just talk about them, just bullshit about them. You know, sometimes we call out kind of just one. You know, we do an article about like some like Nazi guy in metal, and we'd call him out. 
and the hatred we would get from people like just i just just think youtube is just kind of full of these really just like based people and they just you know they would just attack me like you know just i didn't you know i didn't i never meant to be political on it but you know it just kind of you know turned out that way and you know it just got me a lot of trouble so i'm i'm not really doing much news anymore because it's, it's just not working for me you know <laughs> so we're gonna stick to these yeah. music reviews because they're doing you know they're just getting us a little more positive feedback no one wants to hear my opinion about like you know whatever's going on in metal right now but um yeah so that's that's really good but i'm glad you looked at the other videos and anyway just you know back to that <laughs> you know um what? so yeah i don't like tapes but anyway <laughs> but, I, okay i i totally get how you wouldn't like tapes yeah. like bonds tapes are like one of the highest collectible i know labels for that but the, their fucking tapes are shit i know they're they, shit they hiss and warp and they're <laughs> but, that, but that's why we got rid of them it's a piece you know yeah but uh I, I still like tapes because they are if if depends on the label like they can be really reliable and they don't skip like cds and if it's like a functional tape what do you they're pretty handy um especially for backyard barbecues and shit what, what do you well, play it? Oh, yeah, yeah uh, i like cassettes but i definitely understand why people wouldn't like them what do you play <laughs> them in what what do you what do you play them in though like what do you use well, 20 year old beater cars for one <laughs> okay I'm good. right answer well, I, okay i got like a, a pretty good stereo setup with a tape deck and and then i have a portable one for the backyard and yeah stuff, but, so, so you guys are younger so like like i had to live tapes okay i had to grow up with them or that's why i hate them because i they were in the 90s when i was a teenager you know that's what you put in your car and you know you said they would break all the time and they would warp and you know just and when you finally got a CD player, you're like, wow, this is awesome. You know, now I hate, you know, I don't like CDs either now. I just like, I, I, I'm just a media, you know, I like, I like records. Those are cool because, you know, they, they always work, you know, like nothing wrong with records. They're just, you know, kind of expensive, you know, especially if you're a band to make records. It's just, you know, kind of a ridiculous amount of money. Um, but, you know, I'm okay with just like the digital media. It's convenient. You know, I know that sounds stupid, but it's just convenient I know, I know it's convenient. If, but if I, I, get your music. You know, at the, I grew up at the tail end of cassettes. So like I still have cassettes that I bought when I was in elementary school, you know, like like I think some of my first cassettes were like Offspring, uh, Smash, and like <laughs> yeah. just like the '90s shit, like Green Day, Dookie, sure, and all that. Sure, sure. But I still have those tapes, you know. So I grew up on the tail end of it. Bob, we're saying you're about to pull them out. No, I, yeah, grew I still up on have them. <laughs> it's yeah. Right here, no. check it out. But I but I remember when CDs came out, they were like so expensive, and you could yeah. still buy for like five bucks yeah and that's still the way it is like mm. if you go to record land you can you can get one of your favorite albums for like five bucks if you have a sure. if you have a tape deck it's know? pretty niche but the people who are into it love it that's kind of what it is but that's not a very large group of people yeah yeah i think it's just a nostalgia thing you know like you're all you know when we were young that's what you know our bands came on so it's just you know, kind of like a, kind of you get that feel again one thing about tapes is they're merch you know they are merch so mm, you know piece of the music yeah it's better than a cd a cd is just kind of just neutral i don't know like a cd doesn't do anything but like a tape you know has that thing but you know anyway guys so um what you know most importantly what are all your musical influences that's probably like one of the most important questions you know Start, like so uh, and, and, and what do you play what do you play that me yes that guy I play bass. You're the I bass player. Bass. Okay, you're the, they're yeah. waiting for you. Okay, bass player. Okay, and of course, Jan, guitarist and vocals. Um, Riot shirt. Guitar. Guitar and another guitarist. Guitar, yes. Yeah. Three guitarists. Okay, the guitar army. Okay, we got to talk about that in a second. But anyway, let's let's go over, let's go over your musical instruments. What you got for influences, Jim? Uh, most of my influences just come from like early thrash, like early just heavy metal, and less about the more power metal stuff. And now that I'm like in Rome, I'm like go, kind of going backwards and going towards that. But like early Metallica, Megadeth, dabbled in Pantera. I think that's like probably the biggest three that I started listening to. And then that kind of just exploded the whole wide open metal mm -hmm. brain part of it, you know? I love and that, it. That's, <laughs> that's, that's where it went. But yeah, those three big bands right there, that's kind of what started it all for me. Yeah, I think even people my age, that's what kind of started. That's just kind of, that's just, those are just things, those are just basis for metal, I think, those bands. Three you know. staples. Yeah, I think that's, you know, that's, you know, so, yeah, very cool. So, um, what about you, Jan? I think um, for, for this band particularly, I, 
I'd say, uh, you know, obviously Halloween, Running Wild, Scanner, Chroming Rose, uh, really early Stradivarius, like when Buddy was still singing instead of when they got the other guy. Um, and then, you know, the Czech stuff that, like, there's this band Trezor, and then there's um, Citron. Melion. Yeah, Metal Yawn's awesome, which is actually, like, its own, it's just called Metal Yawn. Um, it's so good. The song's Elma by Metal Yawn. Yeah, they're actually really good. Uh, one of the best. Grayson. Yeah, just, you know, and, on, you know. There's so many. <laughs> yeah. So many. Yeah. All of that, like, there's just an old school whole, like, especially the European scene that, that yeah. really got me, you know, the influences that kind of. I try my best to incorporate into our music. Yeah, very good. Yeah, um, we we definitely like you know her like Halloween and your sound like right off the bat it was definitely yeah. just, like, Halloween. Uh, but you know you're into a lot of Euro. Like, we we call bands like Stradivarius Euro metal. Like that's what we call them. Like that is Euro yeah, metal. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's a certain genre. Um, no, no Manowar in there. Like I'm, I'm getting some touches of Manowar from you guys. It's not there at all. I'd say if anything, I don't know, like, we we all like Manowar. I don't know yeah. if we ever think about it when we're right. Yeah, never That's think weird. of it. Pretty That's much weird. everything around though, Manowar, because like Cloven Hoof would be a big yeah. one. Yeah, Cloven Hoof, Crimson yeah. Glory, like you know, I I don't know. I mean, like, I have a good mishmash of where I get my influences from too. But I mean, even just like early '90s death metal, like Deicide and sure. uh, or thrash like Violence and Dark Angel. And, yeah. Obviously, Iron Maiden, I love. Yeah, and, yeah we all. Like, yeah, there's, Iron Maiden. Yeah, uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of that. Yeah, and yeah, like Death Dealer and it. whatever, yeah. you know. There, there's a ton. You just kind of subconsciously pull from, I guess. But I don't really think of a specific band that we try to really sound like. But I don't know. It just kind of comes out. Yeah. One band that's kind of influenced me and kind of the reason that started this band, Young got me into this band. They're called Chromie Rose. And they're like the German power metal band that Halloween could have continued to go and be. And they have a couple albums, Louis Couture's and Garden of Eden. And they're staples of kind of like, you know, whenever I'm thinking of maybe like Riot or Running Wild or whoever I want to write. And if I ever get stuck, I can always just go back to them and kind of get that inspiration. So they're a big one for me. Yeah, it's it's, um, you know, it's like a. It's kind of like not the answers I expected, so it's really interesting, guys. You know where where, where your influences come from, oh. and you know, Painkiller's good. Yeah, yeah. Painkiller, that's my they're favorite good. Priest yeah. album right there. Yeah, Painkiller. Um, when I first heard that album, I was I don't know maybe like twelve or something, um, and like, you know, I never that that was all of a sudden a, a heavy Judas Priest album again to me, like because through all throughout the eighties, Judas Priest was more like pop, very MTV. Then when I heard Painkiller, I was like, whoa. Like, the song was almost scary to me because it was so intense. And one thing that really got me was as he's singing, there's kind of like this this sort of gated reverb in in his voice that almost sounds like there's backwards messages in it. And this was the time when Judas Priest was literally in court for um, those suicides. And to me, as a little kid going to Catholic school, I was like, oh, my God, is that is that devil worshiping? You know, I was I was like actually scared of it. You know, but that's my first <laughs> memories of really, you know, listening to that album. So that album has always been in my head. You know, it's always been such an iconic album to me because it had such an it, you know an effect on me as a kid. But yeah, Judas Priest obviously is uh, you know one of the one of the uh, important bands. Yeah. You know what I never clued into just till recently when my friend Dave pointed it out was Painkiller is like a whole album of heavy metal buzzwords. <laughs> like every it is. every song is just Death Alfred saying dealer. cool things about something cool, lightning, lava, all guns blazing. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's all. Uh... It's like every fucking buzzword you can think of is in that album, but it's so it's good. True. So it's like metal cliches. That's what Rob Halford always gave to us. Rob Halford gave us metal, the, the metal style. You know, like the the le- that yeah. leather, the cha- that can't. You know, that kind of set it. You know, and people didn't realize that was like S and M stuff. You know, they were like, "Whoa, that's tough." You know, they didn't realize where it was coming from. <laughs> but you know, it. that's where it came oh. from. You know, Rob Halford gave that to us. I think. So you know, Judas Priest. You know, that and like Sad Wings. Mm-hmm. or rock and roll or any of the early 70s stuff where like the lyrics were 
obviously like closeted love and like yeah. everything like like a lot of like deep emotional feelings and then he just went to painkiller full cocaine and like every <laughs> yeah that's <laughs> every fucking buzzword you can think especially of. after was it after turbo or after ram it down Oh, it was like during the fight days when he was in his worst, I think. But well, I just meant like um, Turbo, because as you were saying, like Turbo Lover is a very like jazzy MTV. Yeah, show he's kind of doing song. that dance, you know. That's a that's a good <laughs> album, you know. A lot of people used to give that album shit. I think people are finally realizing that's a great album. You know, that was when we were young. That's the all, the album we'd be like, oh, you know, Turbo. Oh, that album's terrible. It's like, and you kind of grow up, and you're like, that album's not bad. That album's pretty good. It's a great album. It's yes. a great album. It's a great album. Yeah. Right? Yeah. right, guys? It's a great album. It is. Yeah, literally great. everyone in the band agrees right now. Yes. Don't worry. <laughs> you guys aren't old enough to understand yet. You will one day when you reach 40 years old, you'll be like, whoa, this album's actually pretty good. But you know, I'm not going to I'm not gonna hold it on you guys. It's it's not time yet. But Oh, yeah. I, no, I, I definitely yeah. like it. I'm, I'm just looking at one too. who may not. But whatever. Yeah, oh, good. Yeah. To own, to each his own, guys. You know, every, yeah. every every band has a weird album. But uh, what else? Um, so, up. oh, you saying something? What? Oh, I said, and ours is coming up next. I don't think it yeah. actually. <laughs> Got these trumpet solos. No, we we're going. Yeah, you know, it's, people go jazzy. You know what happens? You know, it's 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 it's, it's, it's all possible. So, um, for for the bass player. Um, what's your name? Sorry, I, I I just need to get everyone's name. I'm, I'm Jake. Bad. Jake, and of course, uh, John. Um, Matt. Matt and uh, Alex. And you're Alex. Okay, all right. Just went out, you know, because I'm bad with names. I'm call. I'm identifying you guys by like your shirts and shit. It's kind of rude, you know. And and you guys being you guys being Canadian, you guys are just like oh, this fucking rude American. They just don't know how to, you know, because you guys are always just so you know, hey, bye. Come so on. cool, you know. You guys are always just very chill. I was enjoy going to Canada because you guys are just so chill, you know, but, um, so, um, Jake, um, so what was your, um, real, cause we were, you know, we were kind of wondering about the bass player in this band since you have like this guitar army over here, just tearing it up. Like what, like, like what, what can you do? Like what, what if, um, like, how do you feel about that? You know, people make fun uh, of bass players. I don't make fun of bass players, but some people disrespect bass players. I don't <laughs> like for a live situation. There's only two guitars, okay. but so I'm not like drowned by strings, but, um, like, I don't know. I, for when I'm playing live, I just turn up loud as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's your, your tone cuts through. Yeah. I just, I use a, a tone. Yeah. Com- He's the only one with expensive gear. Yeah. yeah what, what do you, what do you use? I'm kind of a gear guy. What do you, what, what are you into? Uh, for bass wise, I play a Kiesel. It used to be carbon. And then oh. for the drive, I use a uh, dark glass. So that's like my main tone. And then I, I use a lot of chorus because Jan just loves chorus on bass. Yeah. It's my fault. So yeah, okay. He got me going bass chorus. But with that combo, it really just cuts yeah, just... and fills things up quite nicely. It's been nice having Jake in the band because he thinks bass from like a bass perspective, which is something we never really done in our writing. So there's just like those pockets that get really filled up and comes through like in our new album the song sears trial he's actually the lead like carrying the lead as the guitars do the the rhythm there so just kind of added a new dimension right in so bass he, i've never had so jake is a proper bass player because i think people make fun of bass players a lot of bass players are usually just guitar players that just you know have to like play bass but you're actually the real you know you're like the real thing so you're really contributing well, that's you know, like to the, the sound uh, you know? bass player and I use a pick too, so I get shit I, on for that. No, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I, I think you know. I think both is good. You know, some of our greatest bass players use picks. I mean, Phil Lynott used a pick. You know, uh, I think Lemmy used a pick, right? I mean, a lot of people yeah. use picks. I mean, you know, it's not a big deal. Not everyone's uh, Geezer Butler or whatever. You know, or whoever didn't else use a pick. It's pretty yeah. easy being a bass player in Rome because they're great <laughs> songwriters. So they bring me oh. this oh. amazing oh. material to work with, anyways, and they. <laughs> Everything's already there, so I just kind of like add my own flavor to it, and it just comes very naturally. And I just I add what needs to be added, and I don't try to be crazy flashy. I just kind of add to the song and step back, and that's <laughs> that. that. And I I, did, I think I did a good job that, doing yeah. that. So. That works well, you know. It's like some people don't want their bass players too loud, or you know, but that's good. That it works really well with the dynamic. So with the guitar army here, so like you guys, you say when you play live, there's only two guitars. So Jan, you're just singing when yeah. um. 
Okay, because I've seen, you know, I've seen your Instagram where you playing that acoustic, and that was very impressive. Like, you're playing the Diablo music. It's like, wow, this guy is a, this guy is a virtuoso. He's not just a guitar player. You guys are just next level. You know, all of you guys, really. But, um, well, that's why I joined is when Jan did Bless Call by himself and he was doing those ripping solos like in Rainstorm. I was like, I am staying here for at least 10 years. <laughs> um, but also we, we credit each other with guitars on the albums is because we're all kind of recording different guitar parts, be it solos or some of us are taking recording all the rhythms for a song or something. It's, it's just kind of like the way we've split guitar duties is it's also kind of been heavy on like who wrote the majority of the song is going to be the person who played it because then they can like kind of communicate that the best so but that's kind of what makes like what i really enjoy about our sound is that we have such a diverse writing group and even nolan who's not here and he's a drummer and he's not the best guitarist but he can still write really good songs and those will be like coming up on the next album so we have like a diverse like brain trust of songwriting and that's why i think like now and even onwards we'll be able to really come up with some unique different things because everyone's always going to have like kind of a unique view on things wow yeah it works really well i mean just how you guys get that all going together how you get that all in sync i mean you know i've you know anytime i've been in a band I never liked working with another guitarist it's like i can't work with another guitarist like you know i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to like sync with them and stuff and it's like i can't have this you know i could, I could it could only be me you know so that's just really impressive how you guys get that working you know so that that is kind of cool and definitely you know makes the sound you know so um now let's talk about um the epic that is known as legends of power heart you know you know obviously we're very interested in this in the review because this is like an epic story so yeah. definitely give you credit because you guys definitely like for the most part got the story right oh okay um, I've, I've had to practice this because I've fumbled my way telling this story <laughs> live on radio before, so I've, I've practiced it. So here's kind of the Cliff Notes version. Okay. You got power. He's an epic warrior. He's part of this fighting force, and they live in the Citadel of Heroes. That's the beginning of part one. Uh, in Hellhound, he finds out his kingdom's corrupt, and contrary to a lot of other power metal warriors, ours just kind of gets depressed and is really bummed out for a song and a half. And just earth. does do with his life, which is pretty that's good. I think he's flawed and he's down to earth. You know, that's better. That's yeah. a better, um, you know, influence on, on kids yeah. and stuff. Just kind of like really trying to put ourselves into like the character. So he gets a time diamond from what turns out to be the seer. And it's only one time diamond the whole time. It just kind of jumps a boot because it's a very big deal diamond. Um, and the seer's just like, I'm going to give you this diamond and you're going to travel away from all of your problems and everything will be good. And Powerheart's like, that's a great sell. I'm going to do it. So Powerheart gets ready to use the time diamond. And who shows up but the Queen of Steel from our Queen of Steel EP? She's okay. like, we got something about the kingdom. And he's like, I'm going to leave. And she's like, we're going to battle. And they battle. And then he's like, I'm still going to leave. <laughs> and that's how the album ends is this, the time diamond does this amazing magic portal with like a red aura and he goes through space. We just really enjoyed the visuals in we that need, one. We need a cartoon to go over. We need an animation. You, need, you, you definitely need to animate this. Um, yeah, it, you get a whole drunk, uh, who is it? The drunk actors who get drunk and then they tell a story and then oh, yeah, yeah, over. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, and then, yeah, part two is just like jam packed. He falls out of the portal. He starts fighting two serpents, kills one. Seer shows up is like, you killed my serpent. He's like, ah, fuck. <laughs> and so the seer takes them and the serpent locks the serpent up. He's like, I'll deal with you later. Uses the time diamond. Erases Power Heart's mind is like, ha, this is what my plan was when I gave you the time diamond before. I'm going to use you as a part of my army. But Power Heart's in the future. It's a sci-fi era, and he's from a medieval time, so that's why there's a huge clash. And he doesn't have his memory, so he's in a bit of a pickle, to be honest. And so he gets trained to be a space warrior, and then his memory starts to come back, and he's like, I probably shouldn't be doing this. And so he goes to steal the time diamond. Seer catches him and goes, okay, how about we strike a deal? I'm in a fight with this guy called the Enchanter. If you could just kill him that'd be great and you could be free and then we're good and then power hearts like great and then the serpent busts in the last second it's like you saved my life i'll save yours oh we're gonna go fight an enchanter okay cool let's go and then they come across the enchanter and the enchanter's really powerful and they're like we are in way over our heads we have this sweet time diamond let's get out so they do 
Trust me, I'm coming to the end. Um, no, no, keep going. No, take, take. So who do yeah. they happen to run into? But our pal, the traveler from Traveler Man over here, man he... here, the famous man traveler. Famous. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone knows household name. Um, so, so we did a crossover story with all the local bands here, uh, and by all, I mean Traveler and Riot City. And so the story Riot City wrote about Powerheart is that their eagle, their G- Judas Priest-looking eagle, mm-hmm. killed Powerheart to steal the Time Diamond. See? This Time Diamond's a pretty hot commodity. I see this. And so, and so the Traveler wants the Time Diamond. He says, hey, you want to go back in time to before he kills you and we'll kill him, and then I'll get that Time Diamond and just return you back to your home planet? And Powerheart's like, all right, let's do it. Um, so we become allies. So we become yes. friends. Yeah. Right. And we kill the Riot City chicken. <laughs> and then Powerheart has to go back to his kingdom. Everything he's run from, he has to face head on. And that's kind of like the moral of the story is like, you think you can run from everything. You can have all the powers, all the things to help you get away. And still you're going to end up having to face it head on. Um and so he faces his kingdom, which is now being run by the Queen of Steel, who was like, well, I took care of shit while you were gone. And then he, they come to fight him because they hate him now because he ditched him. And then he kind of, Jan left the ending ambiguous, which is pretty cool, which could open up for our next album, the storyline, to continue on and get even Fourth more complex. Third album, and- which we're... Or waving from we, me. We so. are We are eagerly awaiting what happens next. With awesome. it's, it's just fun to make up your own stories, you know, um, and write it. Oh, what, and yeah. really what, in, it. what inspired? Like, what? Did, what did did you base on any like sci-fi movies you were into? It, it, you know, it, is it based on like sort of real life things that are going on? Like, sort of a, you know, yeah, like a play on that. I mean, it sounds a little bit political in a way. You know? About it's about both of those things coming together. Um, I think it's about like the the inspiration is a lot of all the video games we grew up playing. Ah, that's the next um, question I have for you. Is that, you know, things like Final Fantasy, Star Gunner, Quake, Doom. There's a myriad of games we've all played that yeah. contribute to that. But it's also from Jan because I don't mind opening up you for everyone here. But Jan's definitely like dealt with some serious like issues regarding depression, and he's used this as kind of like a story as a vessel, and has kind of like opened up to us. And we've been able to kind of take that and run with it and kind of base power heart around like experiences Jan has had. And then we've all been kind of been able to uh, pour a bit of our own experiences in and it's kind of grown, which has kind of been the writing for this whole band because it started out as like just Jan. And then as band members came in and people stayed long term and albums were released, people were contributing more and more to writing. And it just kind of grew to this very diverse um, brain trust for music and lyrics and themes and stories and characters that we can import from other bands. <laughs> I think that's such a great thing. You guys could build this story together, not only build a band and music, but you have this epic together that you're just building on. I think most bands don't have that, you know, that something it, so strong, such a bond. Well, we, we've spent a lot of time bullshitting just playing video games together. Like, we're we're really close friends mm-hmm. so i mean we we have all the time in the world to just bounce this shit back and forth and then eventually when our band started coming together it just kind of fell in place right mm-hmm. but made the music that that's uh that's a special story guys you know you guys are very unique that's why we cool. found your album because it's such such a unique thing it just really stood out you know we try to do reviews on you know very unknown kind of bands we don't you know we kind of ignore the main bands i mean like to talk about guys like you because you know we we're doing these reviews in you know in the expectation for guys like you to actually see them how did you guys find our thing by the way you know how, how did you actually find it you did found you, it how and you sent it to us well i like to search my own oh album same here, every yeah. now and again it's like i think hey, that's important like, that's never important. know yeah, Legend important. Power Heart Rome, and I keep going. It's like, oh, this is new. And then I watched it. I'm like, this is really cool. It's like, these like, guys are just... assholes. <laughs> You're like, this, this <laughs> guy is an <laughs> asshole. I really enjoyed it. it the day after, I messaged them, and I'm like, this is really sweet. And it's like, the way that you guys reviewed it is so mm-hmm. atypical. 
Like, like you guys you have, have interesting doing... categories to base things yes, off. Yes, of. my, my wife think... came up with most of that. My wife came up with the, like the organization of the review. You know, a lot of that, you know, the, the setup of that is hers. I'm doing most of the AV work and just throwing in a rude comment once in a while. But, you know, that's really like most of her work. So, you know, we give her credit. She's, you know, she's sleeping. She doesn't like to do interviews. So, you know, she's not, she's not with me right now, but, you know, it's totally she's, fine. Yeah. but, you know, no, so. that's pretty cool. And we liked those and we liked kind of how you got confused at fun, not fun. And, and it was just <laughs> all used up and it's totally true. Like there's a lot of aspects of this we take very seriously and aspects of this where we are just done out to lunch, just yeah. absolutely ridiculous, stupid. And that's kind of the line we like to walk is when it comes to like music and playing well and playing something good and coming up with like things that feel and sound badass. That's where we go for. And then you hang out with us and it's an absolutely ridiculous time. It's chaos. <laughs> we are super well behaved right now. And we are, yeah. Don't this is why. the best behavior we've had all year. <laughs> it's a lot of ADD jokes and shit. Like we, yeah. We had a photo shoot not that long ago. And yeah, for the photos for the album for part two. Yeah, it was like we were there for like two hours. I think we got ten we got ten. shots because we couldn't we're stop laughing, laughing and non-stop goofy. jokes. We couldn't stop. There's there was like 200 photos and 10 <laughs> were maybe usable. Yeah. It's just hard. It's hard to take shit like that so serious. Yeah, you know? that's good. That really that. are, so, yeah. yeah. That's great. So we're waiting to go for like a pretty decent tour. We were hoping like this album would come out this year and we'd be able to play some like shows in Western Canada and like Northwest USA. And of course, pandemic happens. So now it's just like, all right, back to the studio. Um, and actually, Matt's got some like interesting, I don't know if it's a weird time to bring it up, but like Matt and Traveler, like in February when COVID was happening, like was almost trapped in Europe. If you want to like talk about that a bit now that I'm putting you on the spot, <laughs> I, I guess. I mean, I'd like it to be more about her own, but we can, like, basically we were, we were on tour in Europe, and and right when the pandemic was hitting, we were on our way to Poland, yeah. and they were closing down borders and shit. Wow. So we had to take an emergency flight to Paris, and camp out at the airport for like three days, and just hope we got on our flight. And an hour after the the flight took off, what? they closed the borders. <laughs> yeah. So, so we were, what would have we happened if you got stuck there? Like, would you would you have been stuck there? I or guess. Start go yeah, find me. Yeah. Bring back our guitar. <laughs> yeah, we don't know, man. But like, I try. Like, we we did our best to just uh, not freak out. Like, yeah. there's nothing we could do. We we're just stuck. So I mean. What can you do? We just tried to get to our flight and we made it. And, yeah. you know, no one panicked too badly, I don't think. Um, but it got a little nerve wracking. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. holy shit, you know. And I, but I, I especially felt bad for uh, the people and the fans and promoters we had to cancel on because uh, yeah, it's not, at yeah. that time, people didn't really believe how serious it actually was yeah some bands got ended up getting really sick you know um like uh, yeah i know i like uh what was it um uh there was a tour um three three of the thrash bands um death angel and the testament and i think exodus got pretty sick all the members um they were on a tour together they you know they you know obviously these bands were still playing and stuff and they didn't realize this thing was so rampant so you know some of them well, got seriously actually- ill you know, yeah. well, Carol of Death Angel actually did a good article yeah. and was on Jimmy Radio talking about like during his COVID coma and how he like went to hell and fought the devil. Yeah, we and we, uh, we did it. We did a piece on that. We did it on the news. We did his yeah. article. We were talking about him, uh, like, about his his, his crazy, crazy experience. Um, yeah, that's that's crazy. Have you guys like toured? I mean, have you guys obviously been to Europe and stuff? Have you have you ever been to the East Coast of, of America? Have you ever been to New York and stuff? Or? No, we've mostly just well, been we did Chicago. Chicago. Yeah, we've been mostly landlocked in Canada. We played Chicago in 2015. We played the Ragnarok Metal Festival and now Legion's Metal Festival. And that was a huge highlight for us because the bands we got to play with, like Nuclear Salt, High Spirits, Ostrogoth, Liege Lord, and just being in like an American city, a big American city for a metal festival was super refreshing because here in Canada, especially in Calgary, it's a bit of a metal dead zone. Um, it so, wasn't for a bit because we we had knocked us for a little while, which was amazing. It we was had, like, yeah. It was like the best. Uh, 
I would think one of the best festivals in Canada. In Canada, for sure, yeah. Until until that stopped. And then uh, Nate Reno here, he put on Calgary Metal Fest, and he actually, he did like a classic thrash speed metal show where it was uh, oh, yeah. Annihilator, Exciter, Razor. Yes, all the uh, Canadian bands. And, yes. and <laughs> Sacrifice, and then my old, old band, Gatecrasher, playing with them. Oh. Uh Sweet. So he put on some really good festivals too, with like Pile Driver and shit. Too. That's true. We, so, we had our so, moments for sure. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. true. Yeah. I loved a lot of those, and we played Noctis in 2009 with like Cynic and Suffocation, which is like that was awesome. Having people like that come to the city here was just like, oh my god, this is awesome. And yes. and actually, that Exciter set is like one of the best uh, shows I've ever seen in my life with like the original lineup: Dan Beeler, uh, Richie. And Al Johnson, and it was just so captivating. And how Dan still has it with a big drum kit, and he can just wail it out. Oh, it's awesome! You guys yeah. had your own. You know, Canada had their own metal bands, and you know, it was it was a whole different thing. You know, you know, to our scene. But you know, we always, you know, gave you guys much respect. You know, all the Canadian bands, you know, Annihilator, Razor, all those bands. You know, very cool. So, um, now that you explain the story, um, what was your talk about video games? What was your favorite role playing games? Uh, what, what, you know, what, was, what did you guys like? Fantasy series. I played Fantasy. quite a few of them, just super into them. So, that's been a huge inspiration for me because it, Final Fantasy storylines really walk that medieval and sci fi line for sure. Honestly, I'm not, I wasn't really big on role playing. I guess some of the Zeldas I really liked, but. Honestly, I just played a lot, like a shit ton of Mario Kart and like Age of Empires two. Right. <laughs> Those are my two main ones that I loved. Still uh, do. For me, like if if it comes to role playing, probably like the Diablo series Diablo. Right. and the old roguelike game Ragnarok, not the one that's all anime. I mean, like the old DOS one. Yeah. That one was really good. Right. Uh, Ned Hack. That's another good one. Uh, I do enjoy some of those uh, Square games. I think. Yeah, like Chrono Trigger. Yeah, Chrono yeah. Trigger. I thought it was great. Earthbound. Um, Chrono Trigger is excellent. The Fallout series are good. Yeah. Um, not as much role playing, but like some of the earlier Blizzard games, like Lost Vikings and Blackthorn. That was an awesome game. Dude, we we spent hours playing Skull Tag. Like Doom, Doom. Doom. yeah, we used the multiplayer Doom. Doom. Yeah. Fucking ridiculous. And when Quake and we Smith. all joined the band back in the day, uh, for like the first five years of home, Jan had this land in his basement that was like an eight to ten, like old school between DOS and Windows ninety eight Max and XP in the later years, which is like twenty thirteen, <laughs> which is hilarious. And Played like old school Unreal Tournament, Doom, Skull Tag, and we just played all those. That's kind of like one of the reasons why we got so like close and were able to open it, is because we just would, the sun would come up again. We would be playing so much. Worms, man. We used to play worms. Some worms. Yeah, worms. On, yeah. on, on authentic computers, like, you know, authentic error appropriate computers. Yeah. yeah. So much time wasted in that dungeon. No, I wouldn't awesome. call it. It was so much fun, you know. It was great. If I could, I'd go back. What about you, Jake? Uh, for role playing, the base game is probably just World of Warcraft. Oh, I'm like, mm -hmm. severely addicted to that for like ten years. <laughs> <laughs> Warcraft, I'm playing right now. That's, that's that, you know, yeah. that's to me. That's a lot of the influence in, in the media. I'm, I'm thinking, you know, the video games. You know, no Elder Scrolls, huh? No Elder Scrolls. No, I, I, I enjoy Elder Scrolls. What'd you Scrolls. play? Uh, I like the uh, Morrowind was okay. Oblivion was okay. I got into what was it? Daggerfall. That was probably my favorite one. But yeah, that was. The that's second one? That's one of the older ones. Yeah, that's one of the old ones. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, very mm -hmm. cool, guys. You know, so you guys are all pretty well rounded in, you know, in everything. You know, that that's really yeah. says a lot about you guys. So it's very interesting. And finally, guys, um, when everything comes back to normal, um, like what do you what do you guys want to do? Like, do you want to get a tour back on? Yeah. Like what's the plans? You know, hopefully yeah. next year. At least, like I said, Western Canada and Northwest USA, uh, at least get Seattle and Portland in there. But to go to the east side would be so much better because it's it's just better to tour there. The west is a lot of space between cities and all that, whereas unless you're going down the west coast, but like the east side can go from like Chicago down and onwards and you're just in a new city playing to a decent crowd each time. So And then eventually to Europe for Chrome. 
Uh, we Rome hasn't been to Europe yet, but Jan needs to go back to the homeland and spread the good word <laughs> of thunder. That's our band name. The Slovak word for thunder is Rome. When, so, when, yeah. when I first heard it, you know, I was mispronouncing it. I'm thinking of that Borat movie. The guy says Rom all the time. It means like a dick or something. And I was like, oh, is this is this you guys, you guys trying to be funny or something? You know, because I, you know, couldn't pronounce it right. So, you know, I thought it was like a play on that word or something. You know, but so yeah, but now you know you guys set me straight. It means thunder. Yeah, yeah. now we yeah. wish it was crumb. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, I just that was, you know that was fun. But wow, it's a very interesting story, guys. So yeah, like, um, once things open up again, like we're gonna be hitting the ground running. You know? Yeah, you yeah. want to? But everyone's eager to play. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, you know. Any band that I know, everyone just wants to fucking play. You know? Yeah, so, well, you know, well, like, and, and, you know, obviously, you guys, um. I mean, do you guys like have day jobs or is this like a, is this 100%, you know, like you guys have some um, day jobs. I'm actually work. still in school. I'm finishing up a business degree. So I'm just waiting okay. to get that done. So I can go get a day job. <laughs> oh, okay. But you guys like, you know, but this is like your main thing, like mostly. I run business. the studio. Like I run the studio that we recorded at. Like yeah. It's okay. my so studio. That's, 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 right, that's, so that would be my thing. day job. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just unload trucks in a warehouse. So. Yeah, all right. no, that's, yeah, I was wondering because you know, because because for bands that like have to that have to like do this for money, like you know, they can't play. Think like, what do they do? You know, like bands that just need to tour to make money. It's like I, I can't imagine how many bands are just going through. You know, like what the hell are they doing for money right now? You know, selling shirts. Hopefully, you know, it's, 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 yeah. 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 But yeah, so yeah, we're all you know eager to see you know everything come back together next year. Hopefully. Yeah. You know, so, uh, you know, that, yeah. you know, we'd like to hopefully see you guys eventually on the East Coast. That'd be cool. Oh, that'd we'll be so cool. Yeah, for sure. Definitely yep. come, come see you guys. So, uh, yeah. Anything else to add, guys, before we wrap it up? Uh, we're just working on new tunes. And yeah. We got a tape coming out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tape. Tape, yeah. Tape's gonna be, yeah. Right gonna now. Be on tape. Right now, um, we're looking for uh, labels to hopefully press this new album on vinyl. Maybe we can get part one in there too. Uh, so we're just doing some shopping around for to have like a nice proper release with this. Uh, Hoof Child Records in Chicago. There, our friend, our friend Patrick. He like he does a great job. Um, but we're hoping to get some vinyl. So mm -hmm. we're looking for that at the moment. So yeah. Yeah. If the review didn't convince you enough, check out Legends of Power Heart Part 2. I... <laughs> Not you, I meant the people watching. Oh, I was like, I was like, what? I was like, what did I miss? Um, so please listen to it some more. Yeah. Yes. Well, you know, we got to, you know, really you know, get more familiar with your with your your older albums, too. You know, we didn't really get into those. So we got to, you know, yep. kind of definitely check out, you know, the origins. But yeah, so it's very nice talking to you guys. Thanks for, you know, taking the time to, uh, you know, contact me. You know, I'm glad you. You know, I'm glad you guys reached out when you saw, you know, the the uh, the review. So that's that's always what we kind of want from bands to do that. So yeah, so um, that's about it, guys. So um, you know, have this a really so much. Yeah, we had a lot of fun doing this. Appreciate it. Great, yeah. thank you, guys. Thank you for you know. Thanks again for you know. The, it's it's what the show is about. You know, talking to guys like you and you know working with bands like you guys. So. Yeah, so have a great night, guys. Have a great rest of the night, you know. And I wish you guys luck for the, you know, you know your future album, and uh, we're eager to listen to that. And we hope to one day see you guys live. You know, you you know we'll be there. So, yeah, all right, guys. Absolutely. We yeah. hope to see you. We'll too. stay in touch for sure. Thank you so absolutely, much. guys. Thank you. We will we will keep watching. All right, guys. Awesome. Thank right. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.